Okay guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this cow light effect using two methods, the first one in 3D software and second in Photoshop. Let's get started. Okay, so this is a project I did for a client of mine. It's a new residential uh, building in a quite old neighborhood. And uh, for this project I wanted to do something a bit different with the lighting. Most of the time I use the sun in the afternoon angle, you know, with a, the with a blue sky. And uh, here I wanted to try to do something, give it a different feeling to the overall image. So I used an HDR image with a very low sun position, almost just before sunset, when the street light were just it on but there is still no um, no artificial light inside the window so after a second look I decided that I'm missing something in the street area so why not add a car light passing by to give it the image a bit more movement this is not difficult to do what we're going to do now is take one car from uh, our street let's go to the perspective view Let's take for example this car, I'm going to duplicate it as a copy and position it on the center of the street. Let's rotate it so it will be parallel to the street. And now let's take it a little bit back outside of our uh, camera position. And now I want to animate it to drive forward. So I'm going to click on the auto key, move uh, my frame slider. Uh, it, it can be up to 10, it doesn't really matter. And now I'm going to move the car forward just outside the camera view. And now turn off the auto key. So now I can move it back and forth. One thing to pay attention to is that the default in and out of the keyframe is linear. When it's not linear, what you get is uh, accelerating and decelerating when the movement is, is starting and finishing. We want the car to be in a constant speed all the time. So now let's uh, move the slider to the fifth frame and we want to lead the headlights. So let's pick the material for this car. Let's zoom in in perspective mode. And I want to grab the material ID of this object inside. Actually, instead of using this material ID, I'm just going to add a new material inside and change the material ID to the new material that we added. So it will be ID 26. Let's change here to 26. And I'm going to do as well to this one. 26. And for the other side as well. Okay, the last one, 26. Now let's add, by the way, I'm using a Corona render for this project. So I'm going to add a Corona light material, but this method can work as well with all other render engines. So I added this uh, Corona light material. I'm going to give it a yellowish color. I want it to emit light. To the environment and let's set the intensity to a high value about 500 we're going to test it and see if we need to increase or lower the intensity just for uh, speed purposes i'm going to hide everything and show only the car and the road and let's make a test Okay, now we can see that the environment looks uh, brighter because we don't have the building to cast shadows. So for now, I'm going to 
hide my environment map, my HDRI, and see only the lighting. Okay, I think maybe I can increase it. Let's say go to 1000 for now. Okay, now I'm starting to see it lit the road a bit. And now all we have to do is go to our camera. We're going to turn on the motion blur only for the geometry since our camera has no movement at all. And right as we turned it on, you can see that we are starting to see our uh, tray light. Now, if we want to make it longer, we can go to the shutter speed and reduce the amount. So our shutter speed will be open for longer time, just like in real life. Let's make a region here. Give it a couple of seconds to render. Let's say we want to make it all the way. So I'm going to reduce the shutter speed to about five. Okay, you can see we have a long, nice cow light ray. If we go a bit closer, so it only render this area, we will see that we're getting nice, um, even light. So just let it render for a while to see the overall effect. Very nice. Now let's unhide everything, see how what we get. Let's zoom out and push the render again. And of course we need to turn on our HDRI again. I'm going to speed up the video so you can see the result. Okay, I think this looks very nice. Now let's increase our shutter speed so we can see more from the car and see how it looks. We can move it a bit further. Let's take a look at the camera. Maybe over here. And there you go. I think this one may look even better from the other one. Okay, so now for the second method, let's say you already done your uh, finished render and now you decided you want to add the same car light from the first method or maybe you didn't have the time to do it inside the 3D program. So we actually can replicate the same thing using Photoshop. So here I opened the image in Photoshop. Now let's search for a um, light trail. images let's see mm, I want something to be as close to the first one we did we can use maybe this one or okay let's try this one see how it goes I'm going to save it and drag it into Photoshop Okay, the perspective looks okay. Let's make it larger, maybe something like this. And now let's change the overlay setting. This could work, or even on screen. I think we can go back to screen mode. Yeah, that's okay. Now let's play a bit with it. I think it's a bit too intense for our image. It grabs the whole attention from the building. So maybe reduce the opacity. Mm, no, or maybe Reduce the saturation a bit. Mm, 
Or we can even mask it. So it won't be so intense. Maybe a bit more. This could work. Let's see if we can change the, the color only to this layer. I'm going to leave it like so. So obviously you can change the image and make it uh, yellow or uh, anything you like. It's really simple. Just grab it onto your image and you're done. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and if you do, don't forget to subscribe and hit the share button. I'll see you next time. Ciao!